All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming up. Welcome to the DMP booth at TimpleCon 2017. I'm doing a presentation called Race to Black. It's about contrast, and uh, it's black compared to uh, contrast and white compared to contrast. So I just want to say thank you very much for coming. Uh, and if you guys have questions during the presentation, by all means, let me know, and I'll uh, do my best to answer all those questions for you. All right, so this is going to be a really quick thing. It's actually going to be shorter than this. We're looking at finishing up everything by about 12.35 or 12.30 if I can push it that quickly. So we're going to keep going through. All right, so the main thing to think about when you're looking at screens, we're in the DMP booth, so I'm going to talk about DMP, of course, first, uh, is that the screens themselves can have basically two, op two basic properties. It can be a reflective screen, or they can be an optical-based screen. Uh, a reflective screen will take light into the screen, it'll reflect it back out to you, but it'll also take ambient light from around the room, and it'll get it in, and it'll bounce that light back to you as well. For an optical screen does not do that. An optical screen actually has a lens structure, it's actually made out of seven layers. There's a little model of it here, and it's seven layers. Uh, and what, the way it works, it actually has a, a, a backer that's a reflective layer, or a black layer, and has a reflective layer in front of that. It's got an actual lens structure. So it'll actually let the light in and out towards the viewer, but if it actually goes in on an angle, it hits the structure and it doesn't come back out. So when the light goes in, you actually end up with a decreased black level because your ambient is not there. It's not mixing it or trying to overpower it, it's just simply not involved in the equation. You can actually take it out. So the value for this is called an ALR value. It's an ambient light rejection value or ambient light reflection value. The ALR on a DMP screen is between 0.03 and 11, and 0.11, uh, which is very, very low. A typical vinyl uh, surface that's been treated is anywhere from 0.27 to 0.4. So we are at, uh, at worst, a one-third level, and at best, one-tenth. So quite a bit of a reduction there. Um, and when it comes to image, if with an image, contrast is the king of the image. Whether it's a color image or it's a black and white image, if you saturate fully uh, any color, you get black. If you, if you take it away all the way, you eventually get to white. So if without contrast, you don't get an image. There's nothing there to see. So you actually have to have contrast in order to get an image. Um, and as you can see here, you can see there's good and bad, and I'll go over this later on. And the, the proper term for contrast is actually ICR, which is image contrast ratio. Uh, main things that play into contrast, of course, are ambient room information. So if you're working in a room and you're doing a design, uh, and you have uh, the, the lighting is available, you can get photometric done for the room, and you can actually get those photometrics, and you can actually find out um, what is actually going to be in that room and on the screen. So, because you want the white level on the screen, your white point on the screen should actually match what I call paper whites, my tagline for it, but it's just the, the color, the, the amount of light that's on a piece of paper in front of you in a room. And that means that your iris doesn't actually have to adjust. It can actually go from viewing a paper or viewing your phone uh, and viewing a screen and it doesn't have to actually move. Your iris is very comfortable, it doesn't have to move, so it's very comfortable. Um, and you wanna, be, you wanna make sure that that's within, on, on the walls and to the front screen. You don't want any difference, you want it to be as small as possible, uh, but it can be around 0.75 to 1.5 with having minimal iris movement, which means that you can watch that for five, six hours during long presentations in business environments with hardly any fatigue at all. So you're gonna be very comfortable in that space. The other thing to keep in mind is the gamut of the engine that you're using for the projection. So if you're actually looking at using a laser-based uh, engine versus a UHP versus a Xenon, or different lasers, one from the other, and what you're using it for. Um, so that has uh, something to do with the color. Uh, basically, if you have a, a, a light engine that has a lot of energy in the 6500 range, and you're gonna use that as your white point, then you can use almost all of that projector's energy. But if you use that same projector in like a studio back set environment where you're tuning it to 3600 or 3200K for tungsten lighting matching on a TV set, you're gonna be getting 20% efficiency. So your 10,000 lumen would actually become 2,000. So you'd actually be better off using a smaller projector with a better spectrum. Okay. The other thing you think of is if it's one chip DLP, if it's a three chip DLP, that kind of stuff. So if you have a, a an LCD, LCDs are fantastic at transmitting most of the light that the engine creates to the image on the screen, but they are also the worst at blocking the black. So you have to balance that off against the ambient level in the room. Uh, whereas a three chip DLP has the opposite. It's incredible black levels, but it's also one of the least efficient in terms of light output. So there's a balancing act between engines and, and styles. 
Um, how many people here actually have looked at or actually even graphed a curve of loss for a lens? Has anyone ever done that? One person. Good job. There you go. I usually don't get anybody. Um, how many people here believe, just by a show of hands, uh, who thinks the lens loses 10% or, or of the light or less? Anybody? How many thinks it uses 25% or less? 25% or less? How many people here that think that the lens can lose 50% of the light? You'd be right. You'd be very right. A lot of zoom lenses, especially when you, when you look at where the lens is within the zoom ratio, the farthest and the nearest are the best performing positions. The middle of that lens is very poor performing on a lot of lenses. They can lose up to 40 or 50% of the light. So you buy your wonderful 10,000 lumen projector, you mount it off by two feet and you lose 2,000 lumens. It's dramatic. If you, ever, if you ever get a projector and you really want to figure out how much you can put into it, map that lens loss. Get the projector and actually test it. It's, it's pretty astounding. Some manufacturers will actually release that information. The projection surface itself can indeed fix things that a projector cannot fix. It can focus the light on the audience and make it so it doesn't go to other areas by having a smaller viewing cone. The room doesn't require it. A project, uh, the, the screen can actually make black, whereas a projector cannot project black. So you can actually lower the black level in a room without actually having to uh, lower the lighting level if you're using an optical screen, um, So, which is really nice, uh, especially if you're looking at uh, contrast. So just to compare really high level uh, diffusion screen to a contrast to an optical screen. <laughs> Optical screens and diffusion screens. All right, so for a diffusion screen, uh, basically if you're looking at that, you have the ambient light is actually mixing almost at a one-to-one -one ratio with the, the the projector light. So it's it's uh, at best it's it's a 0.3 uh, uh, ALR. It, it does require the projector to actually overpower the the uh, the room's ambient light. So if you have a projector and you just want you want to get a higher contrast ratio, the only solution you can do is just add more horsepower and add more horsepower and add more horsepower. And add more horsepower. Um, and it, it cannot compete against an emitting technology. So if you want to put up a white projection screen and try and compete against a flat panel or against uh, a direct view LED, you can't. It's just it's not possible. The technologies themselves can't be mixed in the same spaces. They're not competitive. If you look at an optical screen, you can get up to seven times the contrast ratio. It does reject ambient light by actually having an, a lens structure within the actual surface. Uh, it requires lower power on the projector because it doesn't have to overcome the ambient light. It only has to battle against the white point level on the, on the room itself. So the environment itself is 30, that's what you have to overcome, but it doesn't have to overcome that at the screen for contrast. Uh, the quality of the image absolutely 100% competes against light emitting displays. Um, little side story, we were actually doing a, uh, a show and we had, uh, we had optical screen technology and we had a, an LED screen and actually measured the contrast using a, a proper spot meter. The LED was actually 29.7 to one and the optical screen was 25. So right next to it in terms of total contrast. Um, the biggest thing was that the diffuser on the LED is very difficult to clean. The LED was a little bit aged, had a lot of dust on it, and it reflects all the light, so you don't get the black. Whereas you can wash our screen. All right, uh, the ALRB on, a, on a, an optical screen is 0.03 to 0.11. That means if 10 FC of light hit that screen, only uh, 0.3 of that's actually gonna come back out, so three FC. Uh, so basically almost nothing. All right, you can actually calculate contrast. For those of you that haven't seen it, this is the actual formula to really calculate contrast in its full entirety. So uh, really, really briefly, it's basically image brightness, subtract the rim ambient over the uh, black level, which is the image brightness divided by the contrast and projector uh, minus, or sorry, plus the uh, ambient. And that actually gives you a true contrast level of the total room. All right, so why is black level so important? This is where it gets interesting. I was doing some noodling around with formulas and math and that kind of stuff as I like to do. And when I ran the actual math and I crafted this out, this is what I found. When you actually look at the black level, if you look at the black level itself, it starts off in this graph. I started off at 50 and I just scrapped it off and I dropped it down to one. So the black level just constantly the graph just it's it, it's even, one down every single time. The white level doesn't change, it's 400 for the room all the time. But what this shows is that the contrast, which is the orange line, is not a linear relationship. 
as you drop the black level, the, the contrast ratio goes up logarithmically. So the farther you get the black, the closer you get the black, the more contrast you get. So when you do this, when you get the black, you get a much higher outcome than when you start. So as you drop down, you drop down linearly, but you get a, a much better gain. In compromise to this, if you look at white, this graph is going to go from 50 to 1,000 on the white level, and the contrast changes from 20 to 1. So what you get is a, uh, an increase in the white from 50 to 2,000. Then you get an increase in the contrast as well. It goes up from zero, or sorry, from 1 to 20. But that's just 20 equals 20. It's linear. If you double the brightness, you get double the contrast. There's no added benefit to the calculation, right? So it's it's a linear relationship. So adding more white not only is it ineffective, it's actually a waste of money. You get a very poor payback on that. You don't get your money's worth of adding more brightness. So it's not a race to brighter. It's a race to black. So stop adding more brightness. Turn around and go the opposite direction. Uh, it's, it's uncomfortable to view. You only need to have the level of the room up to 1.5. Beyond that, the iris is going to start having to shift all the time. It's going to be uncomfortable. But it's also just a waste. It is really just a waste of funds. Uh, there's almost no benefit. You're better off putting that into getting the black level down and getting the contrast. All right. So this is the level you want to see. So 0.7 to 1.5 times. Okay. So as an example. Here's a standard room. The room itself is 30 FC. It's an ambient level of 10 FC on the screen. And in this, you have an ALRB value of 0.35, which is a very median average uh, reflective screen. So this could be a better screen from any of the uh, any of the major competitors. Um, so if you look at the black level off the screen, really, really basic. I'm not going to do the higher end formula. I'm just going to keep it easy. Uh, it's 10 times 0.35 is 3.5. If you actually work with the contrast ratio for this room, it's 8.57 to 1. That's that's not bad. That's that's relatively doable if you're using a projector that can hit that 30 FC on the screen so it matches the white level on the table. Now, if you do the same exact thing with an optical screen, this is where it gets interesting. Same room, 30 FC in the room, 10 FC in the screen, but the ALR value on the screen is 0 0.05, which is what you're looking at. That same screen is going to have 10 times 0 0.05, which is 0.35, not 3.5, so it's 1 tenth. The image contrast ratio is 60 to 1. So even though the black level is only 1 tenth, I'm getting a gain in contrast of much more than 10 times. So I'm getting 60 to 1 contrast ratio. So you have to ask yourself, what would you rather have? 8.5 or 60? It's a huge difference in the amount of contrast. It's, it's almost not even uh, comparable. So it's a race to black. So if you're going to win this competition and, and really have something that's make your, your clients look fantastic, make, your, make yourselves as a contractor, or, or even if you're a client, you're putting something in your building, get the darkest black you can get, then only add the light you need to get the brightness up into that room. All right, so now we're going to have some fun. We're just going to do a shootout. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to compare three different materials. So I'm going to look at the 0.85 gain, 85 degree, and the 2.3 versus, versus white. So without the light, it's, it's not too bad. Like You can see an image here. It looks all right. You can still see the background lines. You can see some of the detail on the bottom. But once you turn the lights on, it's kind of a different story. So for those of you who have actually haven't seen this material off axis, I really do welcome you to come up and look at it off angle. Because um, it's it's listed as a as 85 degree wide. So even when you're really far off axis, you can still see the image. And even though the 2.3 is listed as having a narrower angle, this is still brighter off axis than the white. It's it's quite astounding. It actually performs a lot better than you would think. And I have a number of images I can go through. So here we have a picture of the Eiffel Tower at night, and you can see all the detail. Uh, you can see that you can you can see the rock detail in here. You know, this one here, it's it's gone. You can't even see it at all. Even up close where I am, you can't see that detail anymore. This is an image of trees with some mats and the mat nice background, nice black lake. And here it is in reverse. Now you can't see the lake anymore. It's not so black. Now it's all 
nice and light colored. You can see the vibrant nature on the trees. You can just kind of compare the two back and forth. There's a waterfall. And it's going to go through the images here. Interesting to see is the color itself. One of the key factors with DMP is that not only does the screen give you a lot of contrast, but it's actual ISF certified. So the material is going to hang on to that color. It's actually going to give you back the same color that goes in. So when you actually look at it, you're, if you put blue in, you're going to get blue out. If you put red in, you get red out. A lot of ship materials, if you actually look around the booths and, and the show floor, um, there's a lot of other stuff out there, and they tend to shift the color. Uh, or you get haloing rings, that kind of stuff, and this doesn't do that because it's an optical structure. So here's a black and white cat. You can just see the difference on the lens by even if I move this across. Very much black. Yeah. And there's a good example there where you can see all the detail in the hair, but when you reverse it on the white screen, the detail just isn't there. The detail gets washed out. You can't even see the grays inside of the building here. Same deal, same problem. So that's it. I promised that we'd keep it short and sweet. And uh, I hope that uh, you guys could learn something. I tried to keep it very simple. Uh, I am releasing a, a, an article today on this that uh, goes through this in a much more in-depth nature. So if you guys wanted to get a copy of that, uh, let us uh, know. Um, and uh, we'd be glad to uh, get that for you. Any questions? No questions. Lots of yeses. No questions. So the question was if the material was a fabric or it's a hard surface. The material itself is mounted onto a hard surface. It's a, it's a laminated material. So it's actually available in a, like a blade style material, which we're actually showing right here. Um, and this is actually a washable surface, so it's multiple, multiple layers, and the top layer is actually a layer you can actually touch, you can wash it. It's actually quite durable. So if there's no further questions, you guys? You got it? <laughs> You're sold on you want it. That's perfect. Let's go write a PO. <laughs> All right. So with that, thank you very much for everyone today. And uh, have yourself a fantastic show.